Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name is Queenie, for those who don't know me, reviewing Married at First Sight Australia, season 11, episode 17. Before I get into it, please make sure to like this video, subscribe and hit the bell and leave a comment down below. I just gotta say, I know that I'm a reality TV junkie and a lot of people don't understand why I love it so much, but whether or not reality TV is reality, it definitely reflects a lot of themes that go on in reality. So I was watching this episode like, I know people like this. I know men who act like this. I know women who act like, like it just, ah, oh, it's so dope to see it. Well, it's probably not a good thing, but it's so dope to see these themes be reflected on television so we can dissect it objectively but then subjectively apply it where it applies in our lives. You know what I'm saying? Reality TV is just so good. I will always be hooked. So we're gonna start with um, everyone's opinions about Jack's comments saying that, Ben, was it Ben? Tim, Tim should muzzle his wife. Everyone's appalled. Everyone is appalled besides Jack, who's actually proud of himself. It felt good saying it, and I'm glad I said it. She was revving me up, so the time was right. It doesn't question my character. It's questioning, like, Lauren and Jono's character. It's Tori's birthday today, and I wanted to have a good night. Go home, spoil it. If someone's going to come for us in our relationship, I am going to protect that at all costs. I... I wanted to say that I was disappointed, but I expected to see men in the comments of my last video reiterate the same thing that Jack was saying. They were like, but Laura did need to be muzzled. It just blows my mind how people can say stuff like this about other people, how people can say stuff like that about women and feel no way about it. There is a way to express your disdain about someone's words, actions towards you, um, for you to say, hey, I don't appreciate how you're talking to me, how you're talking to my partner, how you're talking here in front of everybody, how boisterous you are and all that stuff, boisterous, boisterous, whichever one is correct, um, without being a misogynist. There's a way to express yourself without being a misogynist. And then here he is not even having a morsel of remorse, not at all. And I'm thinking this is exactly who you are. And whether or not Jack is playing it up for the cameras, there are men like Jack in real life. I fear for the women who are partnered with men like that. Let's move on to the commitment ceremony. First on the couch is Lucinda and Timothy who have connected over some naked bodies, not their naked bodies, though other naked bodies. Having a bit of nonsense, including ending up at the stripper's bar. Um, We've been actually getting out and, and going to a couple shows and yeah. So it sounds like a really nice friendship. Uh, yep, spot on. I feel like our focus has been around fun and friendship. There was, there's, although there's small steps, we're still sort of moving forward. I believe it really doesn't sound like it. I don't get any kind of vibe. Yeah, I'm not convinced. Mine was stay. Okay. Why are you throwing me under the bus? You're actually throwing me under the bus? I really like that the experts pressed the issue towards both of them. Why are you still here? It is very clearly a friendship what's the point what is the point of being here anymore uh, any further so um they're having the same issue as cassandra and tristan if you ask me somebody said in the comments that cassandra isn't looking for dates she's looking for affection absolutely of course however affection can be fostered through said dates if tristan if timothy were to curate an environment that is romantic. If they were to woo these women, they would be the re on the receiving end of this affection that they are looking for because the environment calls for such things. The environment is romantic. The environment gives you the feels, gives you the butterflies, makes you think, oh, you are kind of attracted under these, under these lights. You are attractive when you get me flowers and you woo me just a little bit, you court me. So um, yeah, dates isn't exactly what they're looking for, but on these dates, don't make them be friendly dates. What did they do? I forget what they did, but the strip club, 
for some people that works, but it obviously didn't work for them. Whatever else they did, it didn't work for them. They need romantic environments to, you know, conjure up these romantic feelings that are just not happening for them right now. Even with Tristan, Tristan is trying, but the efforts he's using are not creating romance. And I feel like that's, that's something that could help both couples, but no, nothing's happening between both them couples. Um, Timothy is visibly pissed off because he feels like Lucinda has now thrown him under the bus. Now, I, mm, Maybe this is the first time he's heard it on the couch, but he's definitely heard Lucinda say stuff like this before. I don't want to hear this anymore, mm. okay? You guys have been stuck in first gear for five weeks. Agreed. Lucinda completely blindsided me and was very happy to do it. Right? Don't talk to me. Don't say a word. If you stonewall her or if you hold grudges about tonight, it's dead in the water. It's gonna be an interesting week, guys. <laughs> and as much as I'm looking at Timothy, like, come on, man, like he's, she has said stuff like this before. And you know, there's no romance between y'all. It is just friendship. Like there's no way you were blindsided by that. I look at Lucinda and I'm like, you know, you don't have to be the hero, right? She wants to be Captain Save Him. And some people you just can't save. If Timothy does not want to show up in this relationship fully, girl, that's not your responsibility to make sure he does. If he doesn't want to, he doesn't want to. She keeps saying, she keeps saying, you know, I'm I'm willing to go through the dirt. I'm willing to, you, stop. It's okay if you're tired. It's okay if you're drained. On to the couples who seem to be doing very well. We have Eden and Jaden. They say that they're falling for each other. And what is up with my notes? My notes say they're falling for radiotherapy. Quite the typo, don't know what I meant to say there. Um, they have become more intimate, good for them. Sarah and Tim are also better. They, oh, the way that they were sitting beside each other, very smiley, very cozy, it was nice to see. They also have been getting a little um, touchy-feely. She said something that to me was like, ugh, come on. She said that she's a fiery Latina and this is just how she expresses herself. If you guys watch the ultimatum, um, the queer version, there was one lady on there who said the same thing. She's like, I blow up because I'm just a fiery Latina. Being a Latina doesn't excuse bad behavior, but okay. Um, then the last couple who seems to be doing very well is Jade and Ridge. They've also become in intimate and they feel like they found their person. So that's really nice. Cassandra and Tristan are next on the couch. Things were good between them, but the mood swings of Tristan are getting to be too much for Cassandra. I woke up this morning and he was just distant and I don't know what happened. I'm a bit nervous that maybe we're just a bit more friends, you know, and that's where we're gonna stop is just friends. And now I'm just a bit freaked out that I might not be enough for her. I have her on the wave. <laughs> Sorry, Cass. Cassandra, are you attracted to him? I am. Tristan, do you hear that? Yes, I do. I'm not a doctor, even though I did study psychology. I'm not a doctor, so I'm not gonna diagnose anybody. At the very least, we can say that Tristan's insecurities are crippling at the very least. My mind wants to venture off and say, could he be bipolar? I don't know. Like I said, I'm not a doctor. And more importantly, I'm not his doctor. So that's not for me to say. But the the hot and cold from Tristan, oh my gosh, it's it's a lot. It's so exhausting. And so he's now saying again, I don't know if she's into me all the way. And this is why I said in the last video, maybe Cassandra should step up and be the one like curating these types of dates that she would want from Tristan so that he can see not only is she into me, but this is what she wants to see from me. Yeah, they're not really, um, they're not really seeing each other on this one. I feel like from the first impressions video that I did, I was concerned about Cassandra because she said she was an influencer. She always wanted to be on Married at First Sight. It sounded like she wanted a platform by coming on this show. But as I watch her, it does seem like she genuinely wants to find love. And I feel like she deserves somebody who is willing and able. Tristan might be willing, but it's been shown to us that he might not be able. So yeah, I really, I really do feel for the girl. He says he's gonna try. Um, even Mel was like, you know, you can kiss her on the couch. 
And then he did, but I'm like, even that, grab the girl, hold her hand, hug her, caress her, cuddle her, kiss her, stroke her hair, something. <laughs> like, sir, come on. I really feel for him though, like who hurt him so bad that he just can't trust. He can't just, you know, fall into this relationship because Cassandra seems like she's all in. She's just waiting for Tristan to also be all in. Next on the couch is Michael and Steven. They say that they're off to a good start, have strong communication, but Steven still has his guard up. Finding out that Michael had a match before me definitely has, has planted a seed of doubt. I have been thinking like, you know, you sitting here hoping that or wishing that it was someone else. Steven, don't piss me off. Don't piss me. This man is making it seem like Michael had an option, decided the option wasn't good enough for him, asked the experts to find him a different option, and then came Steven. No. Michael was literally abandoned before he even met the man. Okay? You're not a second choice. You're not a second choice for Michael. You're a second placement for the experiment, but a better choice for Michael. Like, let it go. I don't know. Steven... He's a personification of looking for issues. I, I, they say that things are going well, but he's concerning me. Ellie and Ben, they seem to have resolved the issues that they were having before the last week's ceremony. However, Ellie is now starting to pick up on the fact that Ben might be an actor. I feel that I am not getting the authentic Ben. There's a bit of a facade with Ben and I. You're trying to control the narrative, then in turn, you're kind of controlling me. That hurts. That really hurts. Like, I don't know how that can be. Like... Is it true? No. Why not? I'm me. Now, this is what I call a blindside because I'm like, when did Ellie have this epiphany? <laughs> when did this happen? But I like it because we don't like Ben over here. We sure don't. The man is so performative. Ooh, he put on his best Collins act, okay? Him and Collins, I promise you. Him, Collins, Jack, they're gonna have a podcast together. It's madness. So he's now saying he is authentic and he's doing the best that he can. You're not. You're not. She wrote leave, which shocked the group, but honestly, I'm, I'm, I'm glad because there's no way this woman was so delulu to actually believe everything that Ben was saying. He just says things to appease her, but he doesn't ever mean it. We know he doesn't mean it. She knows he doesn't mean it, but she didn't want to believe it. She's believing it now. Next on the couch is Andrea and Richard. They haven't had issues on the couch up until about last week. Andrea didn't like how vulgar he spoke about their relationship. She didn't say anything until now. The words he used, I think that really sort of affected me emotionally. The words, I really don't want to say it again. Talking about how many times a day we may or may not have sex. I sort of, I felt disrespected. Feeling a doubt around his respect for you. Is that something you felt before in previous relationships? I think that was my trigger. Right. I think that everything she's saying is valid. My only question is why she didn't say something earlier. Um, I get maybe not bringing it up on the couch because she obviously doesn't want to embarrass her husband. But during the week, it sounds like it didn't come up explicitly. Richard said that the physical intimacy had just stopped abruptly. So obviously something was off, but he didn't know the reason why. Andrew says she wants it to continue, but in a respectful manner. He agrees. She says that he's a great man. He gets emotional. It was nice to see him get emotional. It, it actually was kind of cute. Um, they're a good couple, man. I root for them. I really do. Next, we have Madeline and Ash. They have not recovered from their honeymoon, okay? Things have just been getting worse and worse. Last day of the honeymoon mm -hmm. was probably our best day. Yeah. And then this, we went off the tracks. I don't know how you can go from eating meat one night to crying the next morning, but I was like, and maybe I didn't articulate it straight away and that's on me, but I can't connect with you. I've been really honest. I've been really open from the get go. The experts really did Ash dirty. They should not have set him up. They should not have set him up with Madeline and putting him with Madeline was truly a setup. A setup. The man looks terrified. 
Oh, I feel for him. What I think should have happened, just for banter, a couple swap. Not Jack's kind of couple swap. But put Madeline with Ben. <laughs> so that we can have Ash and Ellie together. I think Ash and Ellie would, would would be something cute. I don't know what the ages are between them. I don't know what they're looking for in each other, but it might be a better connection than whatever both of them got going on because their marriage is not gonna last. Absolutely not gonna last. Then we have Jonathan and Lauren who are next. The experts are not pleased with Jonathan at all. I said I'd have her back. Do you think you had her back? Not in... I really love you guys, you're amazing, and happy birthday. I hope this didn't ruin it. Um, I feel like you were apologizing to your woman getting loud. I was like... not. I heard something last night that was appalling. My memory's a bit hazy of last night. I think you can remember. He said, put a muzzle on your woman. Yes, he did. I thought I did say, mate, that's not acceptable come on i hope to god that jonathan is putting this on for the cameras because ain't no way this man is this spineless ain't no way the way this man crumbles under pressure and i'm like you're really intimidated by jack of all people jack seriously and john the expert was telling jonathan the husband if ever someone spoke to my wife like that, I would not let it go. I would make it absolutely clear that that is despicable. That is unacceptable. And no friend of mine or a foe could ever speak like that to my partner. Jonathan did say something to Jack saying, hey, hey, don't speak to her like that. But John, yeah, this is gonna get confusing. John was saying, it's not enough. It's not enough. And I agree. Imagine you expect your pillar of strength, your husband, to stand up for you and you have a husband like Jonathan. I have more faith in Tristan to stand up on my behalf than I do Jonathan. Crazy. And then John asked the question that I asked in the last video. Why were the other men silent? Why did you generally stay silent after that comment? Uh, I did hear it, but I didn't hear the context of what happened prior. And then ben, just do all you of a sudden, need context the the for a comment like that? Just didn't hear do the entire really conversation. Do you really need context? We can all agree that that's not good enough. And that if you're in that position ever again, I want you to speak up. Someone in the comments told me that it was not the place of the other men to speak up. It absolutely was. It absolutely was. As a person who wants a husband who is respectful, who is noble, who's of good character, I would expect him to speak up when he sees another man speaking to a woman in a derogatory manner. Absolutely. I want my man to stand up for other women, not just for me. The least he could do is stand up for me, but he also should stand up for other women, for other people. So yeah. I was looking at them like, why, why is everybody on mute? Especially Timothy, because Timothy had all the energy for Tori and none for Jack. So you're able to buck up against women. But now when a woman is being spoken to in a derogatory manner, you have nothing to say? Embarrassing. Absolutely embarrassing. I'm so glad John called it out because I felt the exact same way. The best part of this episode for me was Jack sitting on that couch being all smug. Tori sitting beside him being all smug and both of them getting their asses handed to them by the experts. He's showing you a portion of who he is as a man and he's showing you what happens in terms of his relationship toward women and his attitude toward women. I don't agree with that. When you're at a heightened state of anger or emotion, you say whatever is at the top of your head. It doesn't come natural for Jack to talk like that. Oh, no, it, it seemed very natural. In fact, it seemed like a reflex. How does it feel knowing that he's been out talking to other people and saying that he's not attracted to you? I haven't said that. He's never <sighs> said that he's not attracted to me. Going back there. <laughs> I haven't said it. Are you sexually day. attracted to Tori? 
please be clear. I don't can't speak for you, but I'm probably there. I probably am. Probably. Jack is now changing his story. According to him, he's never said anything misogynistic and he's appalled by his behavior. Boy, if you don't, oh, he, oh, he may be so mad. And Tori, to witness your man do what he did, not only to you, because he's, he has been, he hasn't been the best husband to her either. Excuse me. But to act how he's been acting to her, to act how he did the night before to somebody else and now be defending him, despicable, despicable. I know women in my real life who are misogynist apologists. It's embarrassing. And they say the same things that Tori says. He would never do that to me. You're right. He would absolutely do worse. He would absolutely do worse. So both of their justification is the fact that he snapped. Even the experts are saying, listen, sometimes you get to your wit's end. We totally understand that. But it was a reflex for him to be misogynistic. That's the problem. Sure, you got angry. We get angry. We're humans. We have emotions. But to jump straight to muzzle your... <laughs> oh my God. So now Tori's apparently having this epiphany. Like, oh my gosh, I didn't really think that him saying these things was a problem. Because what had happened was Mel said, he's basically offering you on a platter by saying, hey, Jonathan could, could sleep with my wife once we have a couple swap. And she's like, well, that's just our humor. That's just our humor. As she thinks about it more, apparently, she's having this epiphany and the energy between them has definitely shifted. Your sense of humor is clearly not funny to a lot of people. I was like, oh, f like I literally never thought of it like that. They wanted to say if you'd turn a little bit on me, but you didn't. I'm still taking you home. I kind of have to. Hmm? I don't have a key. Like I said, I know this is reality TV, but reality TV reflects so much of what happens in reality. I know so many women, so many women who either talk about being in relationships with a Jack or are currently with a Jack. And oftentimes it's one of two things. They either don't know how to escape that relationship or they genuinely don't see anything wrong with it. And both are sad to witness. So sad to witness. You can't tell these women anything. They have to come to the decision to either leave or decide to put that man's ass to the fire. I know it's feet, but put his ass there too. <laughs> like, Tori, girl, what happened to, I'm an alpha woman, I'm, where is that? Where to go? If this is an alpha woman child, I want no parts. I wanted no parts anyways, but I definitely want no parts now. The next episode is the family visits. Um, I'm excited. The family is always a good time. Call these people out, hold them accountable. I love it. As always, like, comment, share, and subscribe, and I will see you in the next one.